Hello Internet and welcome back to Fix It Anyway, the show where we create solutions to problems that don't exist. So what are we doing today? Well we're doing something very exciting. We're 3D printing Nerf plunger tubes. Not the plunger rod, not the blaster itself, the plunger tube. A 3D printed plunger tube you say? Well yes. Now the internet says this won't work. They say it's not going to happen, it won't work, the power won't be there, it'll be too rough, even with o-rings and lube, it's not going to happen. Now, the key to a Nerf plunger tube is getting a nice, smooth, shiny inside. And anyone who's 3D printed anything will know that 3D printing is not shiny, typically. Uh, it's ribbed and it looks quite matte, a little bit scratchy. We're going to have to deconstruct it and lay it flat, because the print bed of my printer is glass. And that's very flat, and that's very shiny. And that's what we've done here. Now, I can't claim to have thought of this idea first. Somebody has already come up with the idea of using the flat part of a print bed to create a plunger tube. If you are looking at the uh, Nerf Reddit thread, you will see from time to time um, the Malaysian designer Hotcoins blasters, which are really, really good. I really suggest checking out uh, their Insta and the link to that is in the description of this video. And there was a blaster that was designed that you see here that had that sort of flat print bed to be the flat size of the plunger tube uh, design. It needed a custom uh, seal, which I haven't had a chance to make and test. But uh, yeah, I, I don't claim that I'm the first person to think of using the flat print bed to make this work. But I was probably the first person to think of using the flat print bed and rolling it up. I don't know. So Steve, you're asking, you've made a 3D printed plunger tube for your blaster. How does all this work? You can't see from here because it's inside the blaster. But let's go over to the computer and I'll show you how this was designed. I've printed a flat plunger tube liner uh, with keyways so it can be rolled up and popped inside a similarly keyed plunger tube outer. This is very exciting if you're me and anyone else who can't get hold of plunger tubes and just wants to print their own ones. One poor fellow in Turkey having a terrible time uh, trying to find a plunger tube for his blaster. So okay, Steve, you'll say, you've got a prototype plunger tube. It's shiny on the inside. It has a sleeve. It has an outer tube that the sleeve slides into. So what? Well, I'm after performance. I want to get something that performs reasonably well. So what I've gone and done is printed a full-size version of this and fitted it to my Whisper. this in what is a slightly modified whisper just to show that it can be done and it can be adapted to existing designs. Now this particular whisper has been modified in various ways. I'm not even calling it a whisper anymore. Um, it's actually called a 3D printed plunger tube and actually 3D printed barrel shoots a dart fine. Be quiet. And the reason why this is called a shoosh and not a whisper is because there's various parts that need to be slimmed down, trimmed, cut uh, and messed around with because what I wanted to do was keep the internal diameter of the tube with the sleeve the same so that you can use most of the blaster parts that Captain Slug uh, designed uh, and it's a fantastic design by the way, I really really do like this blaster and then because of that the sleeve gets a little bit bigger and, and that's probably too big to fit inside a Caliburn or to fit inside these bits of a um, unmodified whisper. So it is a slightly different design. It's an evolution just because my printed plunger tube is, is quite a few mil thicker than a uh, piece of polycarb tubing or what you'd normally use in one of these. So how else is my whisper different from the Captain Slug original? Well, in a couple of ways, which make it, in my view, quite unique. Um, first of all, it's got a great big bodge at the top. I haven't got a switch boot, so I covered it in the finger from a latex glove and zip tied that on as an air seal. Broke straight away so it's got a bit of gaffer tape around the top to keep the air in. Um, I've exchanged a lot of the hardware for 3D printed pegs. It doesn't need screws, it can mostly be put together with 3D printed pegs that just slide in. There's a great design for these uh, that's available online. They're a hex shape 
uh, they've got a hole in the middle and a line down them and they expand and contract and as long as you make a five mil hole and a five mil peg you can kind of mash them together you get a pretty tight fit unfortunately not completely tight enough because at the bottom here I've had to use real hardware um, because when you prime this it can pull the bottom off um, that's a bit of a shame but uh, you know compromises I've also um, just put a bit of hot glue in here and on the other side because instead of using hardware again I've used a 3d printed um, pin to go in the middle of that and while I was assembling and disassembling the blaster I snapped it in half so I've only got half of it and I'm using uh, hot glue to uh, provide the air seal now what we'll do is we'll load this up with a second um, band and we'll go take it outside and see how many feet per second we can get out of it And we're back from taking the shoosh, shoosh uh, out and playing outside with the ghetto chronograph which I made in a different video now results are I'm going to say disappointing this little fella in its current form uh, will shoot darts roughly 50 54 FPS something like that it did peak at 60 yeah 60 fps that's pretty good from a uh, 3d printed fully 3d printed plunger um i think the limitations on fps are probably more to do with the blaster at this point and uh, my slightly shoddy build of it um it's leaking air in various places this sort of cap switch boot area which i've zip tied a rubber glove to probably quite leaky additionally i'm having some issues with the uh, 3d printed barrel it's too short for a start and darts aren't really seating in it very far. The previous darts, which fit this really well, this is one of them, seat in there really, really nicely all the way in. I've also got an issue, which is unrelated to uh, air leakage and power, with the catch. If I get this with two bands on it, oh, it's really hard to get it to go. It doesn't really want to, it doesn't really want to shoot unless I have a little bit of fiddling around with it. Now, luckily, I know a man who's fixed that problem already. So, uh, hello, Captain Xavier. Over to you. I'm going to follow on along with your video of how you fix the ooh, sticky catch in your one, and I'm going to fix the sticky catch in my one. I opened it up and um, filed the area where the catch mechanism rests. There was a, a little bit of filament from that orange cap there that was stringy and uh, then smoothed out the top a little bit and added some lubricant and it has not had any problem releasing since. So if you're having that catch problem, just open it up and file it down with a file or some sandpaper and make sure it's all clean and put a little lubricant on there and it should be fine. So what are the drawbacks of this kind of system? Well, as I've said, the plunger tube is a bit thicker because you've got to have a sleeve inside a sort of carrier tube and, and that has grooves in it to locate it so it's going to be slightly thicker than a piece of uh, polycarb tubing. When I assembled this, lots and lots of the actual locators actually snapped out of it. Now, in my prototype, all the locating tabs are still there. There's something like eight or 12 of them. Uh, I think there's 12 grooves actually in six locating tabs, but they're all still in there. They are all along the edge. You can sort of see there are some holes, but that's because they're not designed to go in there. And when I built this, I pushed it in, I gave it quite a bit of force, and this just pushed a few of them out. The, the, there were some burrs and things on the inside of the, the plunger tube. I wasn't very careful, uh, and they fell out. But it does work. The, the sleeve relies on spring tension. It sort of unfurls and takes up the shape of the inside of the plunger tube. So it wasn't a problem. I think it's only got one or two of those locating grooves left in it. Um, but it's completely fine. If I was a little bit more careful, maybe we would have, uh, maybe we would have avoided that. So how would I improve the plunger tube well the design of the sleeve relies on triangular shaped uh, locating pieces that means there's very little plastic in contact with the actual sleeve itself and that's quite a weak point you know especially with the printing layers being as they are it's quite a weak point what i would probably do to remedy that is change from triangle shaped ones to maybe something a little bit squarer maybe something wider at the bottom they're not really needed i've seen from this that they're not really needed to keep the tube 
circular, the spring tension of the piece of plastic once it's rolled up does that really, really well. So perhaps some square locating pegs, perhaps fewer of them, just to fit it together um, will, will be a really good sort of amendment to this particular design, which will allow it to be more easily adapted and perhaps the external diameter of the thunder, the thunder tube, that would be awesome, the plunger tube um, to be a little bit thinner. I'm going to release the files for this out into the community um, and see what people would make of it. If you want to send me something to play with, to try, uh, my email is in the description below. Let me know. I would love to fit a 3D printed plunger to something and plink around with it and have a go and, and show you what the results are. That would be awesome. If you want to print the tube, if you want to amend the tube and fit it to your blaster, please do that. Let me know how it goes. I'm really, really excited to see, uh, having got the performance we just got out of a whisper, I'm really, really excited to see how that works out for other blasters. Thank you very much for watching. As usual, hit the like. If you could subscribe, that would be fantastic. Not only would you be able to uh, see more content like this when it comes out uh, and keep up to date with us solving uh, more problems that don't exist, but it also really supports the channel. Thank you very, very much. Goodbye.